G'day, it's Joel Rasmussen from Southern Cross Combat and ahead of his fight at Eternal 91, I'm talking to Frank Jankowski. Frank, thank you very much for the time. It's good to talk to you again. How are we feeling, champ? Yeah, feeling good. Yeah, ready to, you know, go in there, have some fun. Uh, as I just introduced there, how are you feeling, champ? You are, of course, the champion. I was there on that night. I talked to you right after, but I haven't spoken to you since. How is it to be the champion? Yeah, not much to change, but... Yeah, it feels good, you know. Ten years of hard work, like ten ten fights for Eternal, finally getting that belt. Feels good. I uh, I know you said not much has changed, but uh, how is it in the gym? The day after when you walk into the gym with the belt, are you just like bossing people around? No, uh, no, it's a good feeling, you know. Bring the um, bring the belt into the gym, got it framed up there. So yeah. I was gonna ask uh, where the uh, where the belt stayed. I didn't know if it would be at the house or at the gym. Mm, yeah, at the gym. But- yeah. Why? Uh, what made you pick the gym over the house? I don't know. First pro title and then, yeah, you know, it's good at the gym every day. Good for the other guys to like, you know, keep, keep their like mind on track. And yeah, that like, anyone can basically be a champion. You know, it's just put it in the work and put in the hours, you know. With a, a second, a second, uh, a defense here, a successful defense here. You get a second belt. Do you think that one will go to the house, or will that also go in the gym? I'm not too sure yet. Think about it. Is there a place picked out? Do you have room for it? Yeah, at home I got like a little, um, like a trophy case thing with a few like Emmy belts and like yeah, medals and stuff. So. Bro's got the spot picked out already. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we were talking a little bit just before we started, but it, it is something I wanted to bring up to you. Uh, this fight, you got added to this card short notice. Uh, it was, from my perspective, I don't know for certain, but it seemed like both the Eternal cards for the double header were done. And then you got added in and really boosted uh, 91. Uh, how did this fight come your way? How did you hear about this fight? So um, my coach wants me to have like one more fight in the year, and then the only league card on was Eternal, and then um, the guy I'm fighting, this Japanese guy, um, Takneshi, no, his last name, but um, he was meant to fight uh, Shane Parker, and then he got his jaw broken and sparring. So yeah, and I stepped in three weeks ago, so like a four week camp, but was ready training beforehand, and then my brother just had his pro debut, so helped him like train for that. So it's always staying ready. When, uh, who came to you with it? Was it your coach who came to you with this? Yeah, yeah, the coach. Yeah. When, when he comes to you and, and says, all right, you want to defend your title in four weeks? What kind of goes through your head? Um, just, yeah, the opportunity there, similar to that last eternal fight. I mean, it took that fight in six weeks, I think, but opportunities there. It's a good matchup. It's, yeah. Ready to go out there and perform once again. It's I, I I feel it's obscure for a champion to be coming in on short notice. Your opponent, uh, Takashi Tanaguchi, he was booked for this card. He has had a full time pr- to prepare. Uh, what did that cross to your head at all? That you are the champion. Why are you coming in on short notice? Yeah, it was just to get another fight at the end of the year. And then, yeah, just keep active. Is there any worry about your opponent who has had longer to prepare? Uh, not really. Because, yeah, I've been working the cardio, so, yeah. Uh, do you know much about him? Yeah, I think some tape. Um, yeah, he's good. Orthodox, yeah, good everywhere. Uh, good grappler, yeah. Uh, you, you talk about, you know, that kind of well-roundedness. He's kind of good everywhere. He's got a, he's good grappling. What what do you care? Like, of what you have seen, what do you make? Do you see any holes? Yeah, I'd say on the feet, for sure. And then I reckon he'll try to initiate the grappling. And then I reckon, yeah, I reckon I'm just better everywhere, you know? Yeah. Feet on the ground, yeah. I spoke to you the night uh, after you – well, not the night after you won the title. I spoke to you the night you won the title. I spoke to you after that fight. Uh the the title was something that you were looking forward to. I talked to you before that fight. You talked about it was something that was kind of, you know, it was on the checklist. Mm. Uh, you're obviously wearing a, a Diamondback shirt. You were a champion there as well. But you are now the hunted. This is the first defense. How is it to kind of be on the other side? Yeah, it feels good, you know, but 
yeah, not much has changed. I always just feel like just always put in the work, like, yeah, it's only the first step of, like, the beginning. Probably fine until I'm 60, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. In MMA? Yeah, hopefully. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, I, at 60 at flyweight i do not envy that yeah no, i thought i could move up <laughs> later on later maybe, on yeah end up maybe at the the welterweight area if we're yeah, going all the way, way to 60 yeah exactly <laughs> uh, but uh i know you said too much hasn't changed but but still is a there are some some guys talk, talk about it that it's getting a title is as i kind of mentioned before kind of like a checklist there are some fighters i know in the local scene who are like i've done the australian title thing is it is the hunger the same when you are yeah. the champion yeah definitely because once you're a champion you know you're close to the bigger league so yeah just keep working and then once in the big leagues and get you know the good paydays and yeah take part in full time yeah. uh so at you kind of touched on it there but at the moment it's, it is difficult to kind of do that. How are you balancing life and fighting? Yeah, it's at the moment just been like training full time. So it's been good. But yeah, it's been crazy. Just eat, sleep, trying to pee. <laughs> yeah. How mm. is it to, to, to live that life? And I believe the first time you and I spoke together, we talked about work and, and kind of balancing work and life to be able to go all in. How has that been? Yeah, it's been good. Yeah. So I can get my training in in the morning and then at nights get like, yeah. Because if you're working, you can only train at night time and, yeah. So it's not the same when you can train morning and then go back at night and then, yeah. Helps we, the cardio, helps mentally. The first time we spoke to each other, we talked about this, but uh, what are you playing at the moment? Uh, now that you can train in the morning and train in the night, what does kind of the middle section mm -hmm. look like? Yeah, a lot of Xbox, like Black Ops, yeah. How are you dog, enjoying? Dog for a walk and then, yeah. How are you enjoying Black Ops 6? Yeah, it's good. I've been grinding a bit, but... <laughs> now yeah. we're doing a video game-based <laughs> interview. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> are you enjoy... Now I actually just want to talk video games with you. I just want to... Are you join the zombie mode or the multiplayer? Yeah, more zombies I play, but, yeah. Can't play too much multiplayer. It's too many, yeah. Too many sweats. Too many sweats on it, yeah. Correct. Uh -huh. Just trying to have a good time coming up against a prestige 10. Uh, what are we doing here? Uh, at that, uh, that fight uh, after becoming a uh, champion, that was, that was at home, both mm. obviously in Oz, but that was at home in Perth. You were now traveling uh, to the other side of the country. Uh, there was a big support for you in Perth. How will it be now on the other side of the country? Yeah, um, there won't be as many Frank the Tank chants, but it still be good, you know. Perth's sort of my home. Like, yeah, I got a big crowd when I fight there. I fought plenty of times. But this will be my first fight in Gold Fighting and Gold Coast. But I had a fair few fights in Melbourne and then um, Adelaide, the Diamondback, and, like, Amsterdam. So it's good traveling. I feel like less pressure fighting over east, fighting overseas than at home. Yeah. But fighting in Amsterdam? When did you fight in Amsterdam? Um, for the Gamma Worlds in 2022. What's that like, traveling all the way over there to fight? Yeah, it was good. So I lost my first match to, like, the guy who got silver. I was, like, European champ. So then the night after, I just got, like, drunk, yeah, a few joints, but, yeah, recovered. <laughs> you, yeah, exactly. Some real good recovery. Mm. Um, how uh, You kind of touched on it there, but how did Amsterdam treat you? Was it more... The after party was better maybe than the fights. Nah, the whole experience was good because it's my first time in Europe. Like, I've only really been to like Bali and Thailand. It was, yeah, it was cool. Like seeing heaps of different countries, like in a sport, you know, all different like religions, countries, you know, all in one. We like all had breakfast together. It was, yeah, it was cool to see. And then the fights were cool. Like, mm. how are, uh, you know, I yeah, I asked you about fighting outside of home, outside of Perth. I hadn't realized you'd live, you'd flown to the other other side of the the country, the uh, country, the world, the other hemisphere. Uh, when you kind of have that experience like that, does it work out all like the bumps and bruises of of traveling? Mm, yeah, I'd say so. Because sort of you're just there for like the yeah, the mission to like just go out there just to fight, but then afterwards, if you're like there for a few days, go travel. 
Do you, are you going to have that opportunity in the Gold Coast or is it fly in, get the job done and fly out? Yeah, most likely. I was thinking to stay back a few days, maybe do a few theme parks, but um, my brother and a few others from my gym are doing the Gamma in Jakarta in the start of December. So I'll be going over there to corner and then go to Bali for a few weeks for holiday. So That'll be good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Dude, if you if if you get to stay in Gold Coast, I want to see a photo of you on the roller coasters with the belt. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Whee! <that'd be> cool. <laughs> with the belt on, that'd be sick. I'd love that. <laughs> with with Gamma, not to now just talk about Gamma, uh, because I'm more familiar with IMAF than I am with Gamma. So as you mentioned, your brother had a pro debut. So Gamma, you can be pro in? Yeah, pro and amateurs can do it. Yeah. That seems messed up. Yeah. So, so you, you'd have a dude on Ami debut if I didn't do like five and O pro or, you know. How was it when you were competing in Gamma? Did you ever have some like vet? Yeah, I had one pro fight, but um, yeah, most of the guys are Ami and the guy I thought was pro as well. But, but I watched tape on him and he fought in like Georgia. I was like snowy mountains outside. And I was like, what the heck? And they looked like they were like on ski slopes, like sliding around the octagon. I was like, oh, this will be an easy fight. And then once the fight started, he got thrown over my head and then got armbarred in the first round. But, bro, didn't, uh, bro didn't pack his snow gear. Uh, Should have bought your snow uh, boots. Uh, <laughs> um, is, uh, now, talking, I want to go a little bit past this fight, maybe things in the future. Uh, at that... Uh, when you fought on that card, I spoke to Drillich in the crowd. You hear you and him shared some words after you won. Uh, I spoke to him there, and ahead of their fight, Drillich and Gauchi, I also spoke to Gauchi. Uh, both of those men named you as the next guy at Flyweight. You were the heir to the throne. You have achieved that by becoming the Eternal Flyweight champion. Uh, first off, Anthony Drillich and Sean Gauchi, what did you make of their fight? Did you watch it? Yeah, I watched it. Yeah, it was a good fight. They, yeah, both their styles are quite similar, so they sort of like cancelled each other out a lot. Like, yeah, it was a close fight, and then yeah, Gaethje got it done in the last two rounds. Then I had Drillich in the first round. Uh, what did that fight go? How you had thought it would? You had you've shared time fighting Drillich. I'm assuming at some point. You look when when you're coming up, you look over and you go, might have to fight that guy one day. So you've maybe thought about having to fight Gauchi before. What like did that fight go how you think it would? Yeah, I reckon. Yeah. yeah it was uh, a close fight, yeah. Both of those men will now be in theory returning to the Australian scene. Unfortunately, Sean Gauchi gets the win, but he doesn't get the contract. Uh you have shared time, as I said, with Drillich. The, the a loss that sits on the record have you has anything happened with maybe you fighting either of those guys yeah um maybe in february i'd say i might be fighting drillich but yeah I'm not too sure yet has yeah. that been definitely want that one back sure has he's that... still around the scene he, he would probably definitely want the eternal title back and i'm happy to fight him again it's a tough fight but what definitely want that one back has that been spoken about, like, in any official way? Has anyone officially kind of talked to you about that? Nah. But I sort of already knew, like, after their fight, like, um, the lo- I would have thought there's a good chance I'm probably going to fight the loser or, or yeah. Uh, he made – Anthony Drillich made a post about how he's got fight news uh, coming soon. Do you know anything about that? Nah, no, not sure. If – Drillich does uh, return to the scene and let's say hypothetically that fight he's talking about isn't with you. It's, it's something else. Would that upset you if you weren't the guy to fight Drillich when he comes back? Nah, I reckon that, yeah, our passes will cross definitely even in the future. Maybe in UFC, probably eternal title again. Yeah. Of the two of them, would you have a preference of who to fight Drillich or Gauchi? Uh, either one was, yeah, I want that, I want that loss back from Jillich, but then Gauchi is a new opponent, you know, new matchup and yeah. And of course, Gauchi coming off the win between the two of them probably maybe gets him a little bit higher stakes. Mm, Yeah. Uh, And finally, I understand if this uh, isn't something A, that even crossed the mind and B, if you had no control over, but I just found it uh, interesting 
why aren't you the main event of Eternal 90? Eternal mm. 90 has no title fights and 91 has two title fights. Was there any talk of putting you on mm. 90? Yeah, I'm not too sure. Yeah, it's a weird one. Because 90 is on the Friday and then... I think because I was meant to fight, that he was meant to fight on the Saturday, so then they just made the Saturday a bigger one. It's a day uh, difference. Yeah. <laughs> it just, and that's no disrespect to anyone on that card. It just feels so funny. There's two title fights on one and mm. no title fights on the other. Yeah. Main event would be nice though, wouldn't it? Yeah. How Next do you, time. yeah, Next exactly, time. exactly. Next mm. time. Maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe main eventing uh, in, in February. Yeah. That'd be sweet. Uh, you talked about, I know I said last one before, but now the actual last one. Um, <laughs> you talked about before kind of what the rest of the year looks like for you. Get a W, ride a roller coaster, go to Jakarta, go to Bali. Uh, mm. When is kind of the turnaround period for yourself? Is it that February date? When do you want to get back in the cage after this one? Yeah, definitely. Um, Yeah, start of Feb. I want to be real active um, next year because even this year I was a bit active, but I couldn't even – couldn't fight the first start of the year because of my injury. But then, yeah. Ready to have a lot next year. Be active. Hopefully, we call up or contender series. Stay active. I don't mean to be too uh, premature on this. Of course, the fight is coming up. But if everything goes does go to plan, uh, when you do kind of look back on your year, your 2024, what do you kind of make of it all? It starts, as you said, like not good with the injury, but into, if it all goes well, three title wins. Mm, what do yeah. you kind of make of how the years treated you? Yeah, good. Just, yeah. Just taking the opportunities of, yeah, as they come, you know? Yeah. Grateful for this year. Just, yeah. If I've done a lot, but there's a lot more to do, you know? If uh, right after you sustain that injury at the start of the year, if I had told you, hey, at the end of this year, you're going to be a two promotion champion and a sex su successful defense, would you have believed me? Um, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Probably, yeah, I reckon. <laughs> it's hard, huh? Yeah. Bro sometimes, sometimes I don't believe myself, but then, yeah. Then I go, it's like, oh, shit, like, fuck. Yeah. Then you remember that you're Frank the Tank. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's been all the hard work I've put in and then, yeah, it pays off then. Frank, I thank you so much for the time. It is always a pleasure to speak with you. Uh, yeah. It is, at the time of recording, it's what? Is it 10 days before the fight? Yeah, yep. What do the yeah. next 10 days look like for you? Um, Yeah, just cutting weight, really. Uh, yeah. Do the hard bit of training this week and the next week's just sort of a cruisy, like, Water loading, and then, yeah. Uh, we're doing and this interview. State. Or how do you get into that mental state? Sorry. Um, I don't know. Like, once it's a few days out, it's sort of like a, like a flip, like a switch. Like, yeah. Sort of like a killer mode. Like, yeah. Tank the tank comes out. <laughs> Personality. <laughs> hmm. uh, we are doing this interview at uh, midday for yourself over in Perth. What did your morning look like? Um, yeah, slept in a bit and then, uh, did some training this morning, did like, uh, laps, uh, a few sprints, did weights and then back tonight for like, uh, shark tank and jujitsu. Well, I think you earned the sleep in. Yeah. Yeah. Champ does what he wants. Yeah. <laughs> Frank, I thank you so much for the time. Best of luck in the fight. Thank you very much. Cheers, Joe. Appreciate it, mate.